What's up guys, I'm Morley from Yell Round Blog and today I'm gonna to show you how I made this custom leather keychain. The keychain is made from five to six ounce veg tanned leather. I made this keychain for my aunt Becky who has always loved horses. She asked me to make a keychain featuring her horse Splash who she's had for 15 years. I found a nice section of leather and used a paper template and pencil to trace the shape of the keychain onto the rough side of the leather. This gave me an outline just visible enough to cut out with my leather scissors. My aunt Becky sent me some pictures of Splash and I chose one with a good angle of her face to use for the keychain. Luckily, my laptop screen can lie completely flat so I can scale the picture and trace directly off the screen. I use plain old parchment paper as tracing paper, which seems to work great. I stropped my swivel knife, wet the leather, gave it some time to partially dry, and then got to carving. I just use a dulled nail to transfer the tracing to the leather. Since doing this carving, I've learned that if I wait a bit longer for the leather to dry, enough that it's close to its natural color, I can get much crisper cuts and stamps in the leather. Shout out to Kyler Brown at Brown Leather Carving for the advice. I've been working on my patience with this and getting really awesome results. Since I was going to be painting this carving, I made sure to focus on the lines that separate areas of different color, such as the coloring on Splash's face, as well as her bridle. Once the leather had dried, I skived some thickness off of the portion that has to bend around the split ring. I'll have a link to this skiving knife in the description, as well as links for the rest of the tools I used in this project. I did a lot of the painting on this keychain with leather dye, so I wet the leather again to avoid splotchiness when applying the dye. I started with some diluted bison brown dye for the brown parts of Splash's face. I was really happy with the shading results I could get by utilizing multiple coats of dye in specific areas. The coal black dye only went on in a couple spots around Splash's mouth and nose. Having that picture of Splash next to me was key throughout this process. For coloring the bridle, I wanted a different more opaque brown, so I used edge coat. As its name implies, edge coat is meant for leather edges, but I've used it to paint on the grain side a few times and it seems to perform just as well as leather paint. I did use purpose-made white leather paint for Splash's coloring. I gave the paint and dye half a day to dry and then oiled the keychain with Neat's Foot oil. I gave the oil a few hours to absorb evenly into the leather. To bring out the carving and add black detail, I wanted to use antiquing, but before doing this, I sealed the leather with resoline so that the antiquing would only stay in the carved and stamped areas without staining the rest of the leather. I let this set for half a day and applied a final couple coats of resoline to seal in the antiquing. This step is always very finicky because the antiquing doesn't really fully set, so you have to be really careful and dab away the bits of pigment that come out of the tooling marks. I used some more of the white paint to add some life to Splash's eye and clean up the coloring on her face. With the detail work done, I was ready to assemble the keychain with contact cement. Thank you. 
Before sanding the edges flush, I took care of some of the more dramatically mismatched edges with a razor blade. Once the edges were flush, I added a bevel to both sides of the keychain. Before the first burnishing pass, I wet the edges with plain water. I find that the extra work of a final burnishing pass with beeswax is almost always worth it. Especially when you're matching up two edges, it can fill in some of the gaps and just give you a really beautiful smooth edge. It also smells great. The final step was adding a stitch line to the top of the keychain. I recently started integrating saddle stitching into my work and I'm really happy I did. It's honestly not as hard as I expected. With a stretch this short, I backstitched the entire stitch line. I tied off the ends, rub some beeswax on the knot, tap the stitches down, and this puppy was done. All in all, I'm really happy with how much detail I could capture at such a small scale with the combination of carving, dyeing, painting, and antiquing. Thanks for watching, and if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have videos about making all sorts of stuff. And if you're a die-hard Yelron Vlog superfan, check out my Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description. Have a great day.